Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And it's a pleasure to follow the Honourable Member from Cities of London and Westminster. And I actually agree with something that she said in regards to VAT. And whilst I'm in a positive uh, mood, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'd like to thank <laughs> the Chancellor for uh, his announcement on prepayment metres, because it's a campaign that I've been championing for the last uh, seven years. Um, but, uh, but, Madam Deputy Speaker, I, I feel like there's a lot missed in this budget. Like, at the moment, we are facing a profit crisis while other people are struggling. And the Office of Budget Responsibility has stated that real household income is due to fall by 5.7% in the next two years, which is the largest two-year fall since records began. So it will be lower than pre-pandemic levels. So I think the Chancellor has missed a huge uh, trick here. And the pension announcements, and I know the devil will be in the detail, but the pension announcements, as far as I can make out, is for the wealthy, for those that can afford yeah, yeah, to put right. away £60,000 a year. Yeah. Um, and, and also, it seems like the only permanent tax cut in the budget is for those who were, who were very, very wealthy. Um, and the Chancellor could have stopped all the strikes if he had only made an announcement on public sector workers' pay today, but he chose not to do that. And there was nothing, as we've heard from other members on this side of the House, on capital gains tax or income uh, tax. And that's very strange, Madam Deputy Speaker. And the thing is this, improving the UK economy cannot happen without London's contribution. And London's councils have uh, some key five priorities. And if I can just list them, they are housing and homelessness, health and care, supporting businesses, helping London deliver net zero, and greater devolution to local government. London businesses are struggling in the face of increasing labour and energy costs and sustained high inflation. And I just wonder if the Chancellor will commit to keep the energy bill relief scheme under review and materially improve the discount for businesses. Um, also reform, reform the apprenticeship levy to make it easier and cheaper for employ, employers to recruit and retain talent. At the moment, there's a lot of we've heard about um, employers buying equipment rather than investing in people. Yep. And as the uh, Honourable Member from Cities of London had said, uh, reintroduce the VAT retail export scheme to make London and other UK destinations more competitive to overseas shoppers. It will actually add a net gain to the public purse. Um, there has been, in local authorities, especially mine in Brent during the pandemic uh, and the current cost of living crisis, there is it means that local authorities will have to make savings of at least £100 million next year to balance budgets. That is just not sustainable for local authorities such as mine in Brent. And we have a problem with homelessness. Shelter recently reported that one in 58 Londoners are homeless. So will the Chancellor increase the local housing allowance rates, which have been frozen since 2020, to help homelessness? Um, and also in, increase discretionary housing payments. I mean, all of these things are things that the Chancellor could have done if he was really interested in investing in growth in our countries, because local authorities can only do so much. Um, and I wonder if there is money to provide additional investment for the refurbishment of existing housing stock to treat damp, mould and address uh, fire and building safety. We know that when Labour came in last time, they had to put a lot of money into making social housing right. And, and something that's very important, especially as I say in, in, in London, is to remove all restrictions on how councils can use right to buy receipts to sustain affordable housing delivery without placing additional demands on the public purse. These are all things that can be done if we had a bit of imagination from the government. And let me not forget that London's devolution settlement is over 20 years old. The government's commitment to deepen devolution should apply equally to London to enable London boroughs and the Mayor of London to tackle 21st century problems facing the capital today. And I just wonder, as I conclude, Madam Deputy Speaker, if the Chancellor will work closely 
with London Councils. My, myself as chair of the London uh, PLP and to ensure that the burden that, that we broaden the balance of revenue raising powers available to councils in the longer term to improve financial resilience and reduce reliance on any single funding stream. Uh, we've heard today that members opposite have said, Madam Deputy Speaker, that they're sometimes confused what, what we stand for on this side of the House. And, and I, just want to, uh, I just want to reassure and reaffirm that London stands and Labour Party stands for a moral crusade for making our country better. And I do hope the government will take some of these points on board.